Today is all about how to stencil on furniture. I have some great tips for you, so just let me get set up and I'll be right back. So step one is plan your design, and I've already partially completed this. I painted a base coat of part peacock and part the gulf, which gave me this beautiful Tiffany blue green. And I've decided on Dixie Belle's new Morocco stencil to be my stencil design. So planning your design, it comes to what stencil you're going to be using and also what colors you'd like to be using. Now I've done this beautiful blue, custom blue green on this piece, but the stencil will be done in white. I debated between white and silver, but I've decided on white. Um, so that's step one is your planning and preparation and also to paint your base coat. Step two is to secure your stencil. And this can either be done with a painter's tape or a temporary adhesive. And I actually like using this one. I'll actually include a link in uh, the notes below. But this, you can spray on it, especially if you're working with larger areas or maybe areas that you need to get in little crevices. This is fantastic. So what you do is you give it a shake, you spray it on the back of the stencil and you wait three to five minutes and that creates a temporary tackiness. Now, I don't necessarily need this for today's stencil, so I'll just be laying it on and using, I might not even need the painter's tape actually because depending on the size and the area you're going to cover will depend on whether you feel you need either of these. But these two are great to secure the stencil if need be. So uh, the trick here is to figure out where you want your stencil design to lay. And in my case, I'm going to have this square here, smack dab in the center, and then work my way out. So I'm just gonna center it by eye. And then I will be using green painter's tape. Now, because this stencil obviously is a nice large stencil that will cover a lot of area and this drawer is a smaller surface, I'm still going to have to use my hands to make sure everything is flat while I'm stenciling. So I've added some Dixie Belle cotton to a paper plate and I'm going to be using a stenciling brush uh, which has a flat edge to it. So how I'm gonna do it is put a small amount of paint. Well, this isn't a small amount, but this is way too much <laughs> because to prevent bleed through through your stencil and have a nice crisp design, the trick is to do it with a drier brush. And if you want it darker, add two coats rather than just try getting the opacity you want in the first coat because then it, it, your design may turn out very messy. So as you can see, it's very dry. And rather than go back and forth, you're gonna stencil in a pouncing motion. So I'm gonna keep the design as flat as possible. And I'm going to pounce. This does take a little bit of time. You wanna take your time with this. You don't wanna rush it because you want a nice clean design. move on to the next part and make sure that it's flat against my piece. And you just work away in little areas until you've covered your whole stencil. I mean, I could pull this up right now and then finish off the ends and it would be a, a nice stencil design. However, I want it a little darker. So by the time, because it's such a light, light coat of paint, this is already dry. So I'm gonna go in and pounce it a second time, so a second coat, so the design is more crisp and pronounced. Now, in a perfect world, 
surface that you're stenciling is going to be totally flat, but unfortunately furniture is not totally flat. So you might have to go around edges or you might have creases that the stencil needs to get into. There is really no great way of doing this other than just kind of bending the stencil around because they're all very pliable and holding it as close to the edge as you can to get a nice crisp line. Um, it's, it's not an ideal perfect way of doing it, but really there's no other way to do it. So you just kind of have to maneuver it around. And if there is any bleed through, you can always go in with an artist's brush and touch it up afterwards. Here's the exciting part. This doesn't necessarily have to be dry once you lift it, but I do suggest waiting for it to be dry for overlapping and finishing off the design. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. But let's take a peek at what this looks like. To finish off the ends of the drawer, I have to match the stencil design because you want the design to continue. So we're going to match this up oh, certainly I'm doing it the wrong way there you go so we're going to match this up and then finish up our ends and you want to match it up as perfectly as possible Perfect. You can tape it or you can just hold it down with your hand. And seeing as this is such a small area, I'm just going to be holding it down and pouncing. Another tip when stenciling furniture, and you often have edges uh, just like this, is how I do it is I'll lay the stencil down and I'll pounce right in the corners. Now this is going to make a mess. I'll show you. This is going to make a mess where you don't want the stencil. And I'm going to have to repaint this edge right here. But then it'll be as close to the edge as possible on this lip here. I hope you found these tips on how to stencil on furniture helpful. It can make a huge difference in a piece, and I really hope it's encouraged you to give it a try. I'm Denise at Salvaged Inspirations. I'd love it if you visited me over at salvagedinspirations.com where there's over 400 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. I hope you have a fabulous day. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.